Hello there, my name is Mr. Smarlonky. Welcome back to another Let's Play on Total War Shogun 2. So today we're going to be playing our first Rise of Samurai campaign. Um, so I was actually thinking that I could probably just jump into this game and do a legendary campaign right away because I've played it several times before. Um, and I figured since I know enough, it should be all right to do a legendary right away. Um, whereas, of course, with uh, Fall of the Samurai, I'm doing a hard campaign first because I didn't know much about it. However, um, I just played, or I tried two campaigns of this game on Legendary yesterday, and it didn't really work out. So I'm gonna go on uh, on hard first, uh, just to do one campaign on hard, and then uh, we'll jump into Legendary after that as well. Just to get used to how the game works again, because I, I have completed campaigns on this before, but it's been so long. But I really don't remember much. I mean, I I, I thought I did, but I, I guess I don't really. Plus, I mean, yeah, Legendary on this is a different beast than it is on regular Shogun 2, of course. Um, so let's turn it off as well. Right, so clan. Uh, you have six different faction or clans. Um, however, there's basically three families. There's the Minamoto, the Taira, and the Fujiwara uh, f families. And then within those families, you have two sister clans, basically. So... For the Minamoto, you've got the Kamakura and the Kiso, and then Taira, you've got two, and Fujiwara, you've got you've got two as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, so you start as allies with your sister clan. They also start uh, close to each other. Of course, these guys start right next to each other in these four provinces up the top left, uh, top right. Sorry, Minamoto start down there and up here. So north of South Shinano and uh, the Hojo starting province basically for the Kamakura. And the Tyra start over here uh, towards the west uh, on Tosa partially with this clan. And uh, uh, these guys start just around Kyoto. And they actually own Kyoto right away as well. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to do a Let's Play on the Kizo. Uh, I think that's actually one that I've done before on, uh, on, a, on a previous channel. Not on this one. But um, just uh, because I think when I start Legendary I want to do the Kamakura or uh, one of these ones. I don't like the starting positions for these guys. But, I don't know, it's kind of odd. But we'll, uh, we'll do the Kizo first. So we start with North and South Shinano, uh, close to the um, Takeda starting province, but not quite. Uh, anyway, so the Kizo Minamoto, they start with Blessed by uh, Raijin, uh, or something. Plus 20% to campaign movement range for all armies. They have speedy mobilization, which uh, reduces their recruitment costs for Samurai units by one turn. Um, yeah, which, that's really, really good, by the way. Although, there's not that many samurai units, but still, that's pretty good. Uh, warfare for minus 20% to the rate at which Bunka arts are mastered. Which is actually... Um, I think this is a bad thing. Yeah, this means that... Okay, so you've got two uh, trees. You've got Budo and Bunka. Bunka is the the right one, so the civil one, basically. And uh, Buda or whatever, Budo is the, the, the war one. So they actually have... Um, like they, their art mastery is slower for the right tree, the civil tree, and uh, regular speed for the re for the, the military tree. Um, and they have four samurai, which means they have the bushy art already mastered, which is cool. So you can make samurai units pretty early on, but you can make the latest game units really early on in this game, actually. So anyway, um, let's jump into it. So the initial challenge is also easy. This this should be alright. Like I said, I played it on legendary. It was harder than than. I thought it was. Um, I did like I played one with the Kamakura. I did all right. I got relatively far, um, but then like I started to notice that morale in this game is absolutely horrendous for the starting units. Like it's not even funny. Um, I'll go over it later, but yeah, it was just ridiculous how fast my army started to route, and I just couldn't beat similar armies, and it was kind of stupid. And I played one campaign with these guys, and I waited too long to expand, and then I had a super good army, but um, <laughs> I had no word. Like, I, I didn't have enough money to upkeep it, basically. But anyway, so yeah, so we're going to do the Kiso on uh, on hard first. Let's do one uh, campaign on hard, just like with Fall of Samurai, and then we're going to jump into Legendary after that. So yeah, let's uh, start the game finally. The Sengoku Jidai was a time of war, but those who say Japan has never seen the like have short memories. Long before the Ashikaga Shogunate, 
400 years of peace was shattered by the Genpei War. Amaterasu, the sun goddess, watched over the emperors of Japan and gave them power. Their authority was absolute. An emperor could retire from the world and still have complete mastery over Japan. But now, imperial might is crumbling, weakened by three noble families. For many years, the Taira have secretly controlled the imperial court. Sophisticated, cunning, ruthless, they plot against any challenges to their hidden power. The Minamoto are proud warriors. Their pleasure is battle, that and the destruction of their enemies. The Fujiwara were once the most powerful family in Japan, but now, they only dream of power. After years of careful planning, the Taira are finally ready to make their move. The Miyamoto intend to block with all their might. Meanwhile, the Fujiwara watch and wait. Perhaps this moment is a chance to right wrongs. The Imperial Peace is at an end. War is coming, and blood will flow. We are the Minamoto, forced into exile by the Taira, following their overthrow of the Fujiwara Regency. We have since grown strong driven by our hatred for our old enemies. In recent times, the Tyra have become weak, preoccupied by the intrigue of court life at the expense of the realm. However, their support is waning, and even the imperial household is beginning to question the liberties that have been taken. We must rally the people against their Tyra oppressors and would do well to remember the Fujiwara. As outcasts to the north, they are waiting for their chance to seize power again. No matter, while they make fine poets and politicians, they are no match for us on the battlefield. The Minamoto will rise. All right, so we don't actually get a uh, mission right away. We do get a lady okay. who talks to us, but not about if our daimyo is to become shogun, military ruler of all of Japan. Right, so, um, this is our starting position, South and North Shinano. Um, I guess I'll explain everything to you guys as we go. Um, if you don't, if you've never played uh, Rise of Samurai before, or if you don't remember it, or, or however, um, I mean, it, it'd be useful for you guys to keep up as well, I guess. Um, so anyway, I guess we'll start with uh, what I always do. Let's just go over our clans and all that, and then we'll have a look at other stuff in a bit. So we have a 21-year-old daimyo, and that's pretty damn good, um, who's got a cunning wife, which gives him a minus 5% to the character chance of being assassinated, and, of course, the plus 1 morale everyone gets. And then we have our commissioner for warfare, 22-year-old general. Not bad. We've got some pretty good generals here. I'll switch him to commissioner for, war uh, for development next turn once we can actually do that. Um, then we've got our diplomacy. Holy crap. That is a lot of clans we can trade with. <laughs> Holy shit. I guess that's why our starting position is, uh, is somewhat simple. Um, so okay, let me, let me first... Okay, right. So, let's start with, um, with this. You'll notice this. Uh, every clan has uh, an allegiance, basically, to one of the three major families. So, the Minamoto, the Taira, and the Fujiwara. Um... So there's no Buddhist, uh, or no Buddhism, or no uh, Ikoiki religion, or no Christianity, or whatever. Every town has an influence bar, and that is, like, dependent on the buildings that are there. So you have uh, buildings like the Clan Estate, uh, which um, improves the spread, and when you level up all the way to the max, it improves the spread to neighboring provinces as well. But a clan by themselves are influenced to a certain faction, uh, or, yeah, a certain family. Um, so, 
one thing that we can very easily do is any factions that we know uh, are already like fully Minamoto or are close to, we can send our Jinsatsushi over to them and we can request our allegiance. Uh, he can also spread the influence, so I, even if they're not uh, at all Minamoto, then I can put the him in there, they'll start becoming Minamoto, and then I, t I can take their town from them basically, very simply, pay a little bit of money, I get their town, that's it. If they have an army in there, however, um, and it's not their last town, then it means I either go to war with them, um, well actually I will go to war with them, and then we either get the full town and the war just com uh, is gone right away, or we get part of the garrison that's in there, and then we can take the town with the garrison anyway. Um, but yeah, that's a very useful way to take towns, which actually is pretty cheap in Legendary as well, so it's not something that uh, you can only do on lower difficulties. It's not like bribing in regular Shogun 2, which is not that good because it's super expensive. In this game, it's actually pretty doable. Um, right, so yeah, every clan has an allegiance to a certain faction. Which, so you can see there's already a bunch of clans around here, like this one, uh, for example, and all these four down here are all allied to us, uh, the Takeda, right down here. So we could just send this guy down there. We could possibly take this town this turn right now. I might even do that. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, and also, you don't get any resistance to invaders or anything if you do that either, because uh, you don't invade their lands, you request their allegiance, they accept, they join you, that's it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, but before we do all that, let's, uh, let's see how we can, or if we can get some trade Speak going with some people. And do so with dispatch. I have other pressing business with my... Because it looks like we can get trade going with a whole lot of clans. We can actually do this with this clan local. as well. Especially in these times of requesting their allegiance because they're right next to us as well. I mean, we could do with anyone across the entire of, uh, entirety of Japan, but um, obviously it's easier to do it with people that are right next to you. Oh yeah, this is definitely different than uh, Legendary already. Well, Legendary they did not want to pay me more than like fifty or sometimes a hundred. That's pretty good. It's gonna take a few minutes to get all the damn trade coming now. I have weapons that need polishing. Speak quickly. But man, there is a lot of clans around us that we can trade with. Speak your I think as long as we're not at war, war with anyone, we can trade but through our lands, basically. One moment that words alone will sway our opinions. So we can we can get trade, but yeah, when we go, if we do go to war with some clan, then it might break up a whole bunch of trade with other clans as well. But for the moment, we're gonna get all this little starting money from every single clan. For our trade, so if anything, that's insta profit right there. It's just they're all like slightly off from each other, so it's hard to ask for a particular amount. And assuming that's going to work, it looks like a lot of them will pay 200 though, if they're willing to pay anything. Looks like 200 is the uh, go-to number. Oh my God, there's so many clans. Okay, they don't actually want to trade. That's the first. And all these are probably going to want to trade because they all like me. Pretty speech. But do not imagine for one moment that words alone will sway our opinions. I'm sure words alone won't sway your opinion. 150 for him. Alright, the Nitta. They also Please won't trade. Speak honestly, and I will give you good attention. Hmm, maybe they don't want to pay anything actually. Oh, right. So let's take trade with them. So much trade! Oh my god! I wonder how much money we're gonna make instantly. Okay, they actually don't want to trade. Well, that's uh, that's a good target to take right away. Then, if they don't want to trade with me, then they're going down. Well, I will listen to your words for a time. Do not waste this Kay. chance I give. And we currently are not trading with our ally, but if we do take this town right away, then we will be. So I'm gonna go and try that right away. Actually, we're gonna send this guy down here. Okay, so. Okay, we only have a 30% chance, actually. Uh, it is 80%. I guess it's also because... I don't know. I actually don't know. On Legendary, I had far higher chances to do so. Not sure why the percentage chance is so low to do it right now. But I guess we'll try it later on or something. Um, okay, so we've got our Master the Arch Tree as well. So you can see, this is the Budo tree, this is the Bunker tree, so you can see uh, minus 20% to the current uh, bonus rate uh, to mastery, so it's actually not a bonus, it's a debuff, I guess. Um, but we do start with uh, Bushi already unlocked, so we got Budo plus t t 2 charge and 1 defense for all units, and plus 2 charge for all units, and it allows us to make the Bushi school, which gives us Foot Samurai. So, 
before I go into, actually I'll just, uh, I'll queue up uh, these two, because this is just money. This would normally take five turns, I think, and I'll take seven, because it's like one turn more, even though it's only 20%. But anyway, um, let me uh, show you guys the units, how it works in this game. So over here we've got the Bushi training grounds already, which allows us to make uh, the sword attendants and the bow attendants. The Naginata Levy and the bow levy are basically the uh, Boa Shigaru and uh, Yarea Shigaru. I mean, they're not the same unit, obviously, but as in that you can recruit them anywhere. Um, the sword attendant, however, is not what you'd think. So you've got the three levels again, or actually you've got sort of four levels. You've got levies, then you've got attendants, then you've got samurai. Um, but there's only like one samurai unit and besides the cav and then you've got uh, warrior monks So you've got your bow warrior monks your Naginata warrior monks, of course <clears throat> Well, not of course actually, but yeah, you've got those um, Sword attendants, however, they're not like a katana unit They are actually more like a nodachi unit where they've got a high charge They've got decent melee, but they got terrible melee defense and all that and terrible armor Well, not terrible armor, but pretty bad armor um Bow attendants are an alright bow unit, but again, the bow warrior monks are just a little bit better. Um, and then you've got your foot samurai that you can unlock next level. Of, uh, and the samurai in this game is, diff is different. The foot samurai is basically a mix between uh, a ranged unit and a melee unit. However, there's only 60 of them in the unit, which makes it a very small unit. On the other hand, though, all units are a lot smaller. Um, fuck you, telephone. Get the fuck out of here. Um, the levy units are 160, and the sword attendant, for example, is 100, the bow attendant is only 80, um, so the foot samurai being only 60 is not that much less, uh, but still, it's it's like a very small unit regardless. Um, generals in this game, by the way, have bows of their own. I think we can see their stats, uh, actually, hold on. How do you see the general stats again? There you go. Um, yeah, you can see they have a, a bow... Um, as well, and they are actually pretty good archers. Like, like they're like the best archer units, regular stat-wise in the game. Um, anyway, so that's like one of the, the trees. You got the uh, the samurai here, and then you unlock uh, the mounted samurai, which is basically the same thing but on a horse. Then you got the uh, legendary school, which gives you the mounted samurai hero. Um, then in the other tree, we have uh, that's the Koryu training ground uh, over. Here, this is the uh, warrior monk training ground, and it also gives you Naginata attendants. Naginata attendants are more like your your mainline infantry, um, and they probably will be one of the mainline infantry until the end of the game because there's just not really anything better to put there. Because I don't know, foot samurai. I don't know if they're right for that because they're such a small unit. And besides that, besides the Naginata attendant, there's not really any higher level armored unit. You've got the bow warrior, or sorry, the uh, Naginata warrior monk, but they have four armor, which is the same as the Naginata attendants. And you've got the bow warrior monk, which funnily enough have five, five armor, and they actually have more armor than both the Naginata attendants and the bow warrior monks. But anyway, um, so the Naginata warrior monks, you get that from the next level. Then you get your uh, mounted Naginata and the Tatsuba warrior monk hero. And last but not least, you get uh, Ona Bushi heroine. And there was uh, Naginata Warrior Monk Hero. I don't think we had that one yet. Or, yeah, we had the Tatsuba Warrior Monk Hero, and then you get the yeah, Naginata Warrior Monk Hero. But yeah, there's no really, uh, no real good units for a front line. Uh, so it's it's kind of odd in that way. And those are the only units that you'll be able to build, except if you upgrade this to, I believe it's this one, and then the next level, the barracks, you can actually make firebomb throwers as well. I don't think there's any more other units that you get. No, there's not. So firebomb throwers is a, is a thing as well, but I don't think I'd ever make them in this game. Hello. Maybe they'd be better in this game than they are in the regular Shogun 2, but who knows. Um, but yeah, you can see this. the, the unit variety is very small in this game. Um, and I honestly don't really know what you'd put in your frontline unit, except for either regular Naginata attendants or bow... Uh, sorry, or Naginata warrior monks. Um... But it definitely wouldn't be the sort of tenants, and you don't want these guys in the front line either, because their morale is so absolutely horrendous. It's four. It's the same on legendary, but obviously on legendary it's even harder, because these guys just guys just route so ridiculously quickly. Like it's 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 just it's nearly impossible to win with these units um, early on in the game. You just have to get other units as soon as possible, or you're just not going to make it. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, we got our Master of the Arts uh, done. So yeah, it's it's pretty similar to the regular game. This part right here is money. This part over here is like happiness and uh, Buddhist stuff or, well, yeah, the, the Buddhist temple and all that. Um, and uh, loyalty and, and that sort of thing. Then this side of the tree is your uh, bushy uh, dojo stuff and charging and that sort of thing. This side of the tree is more defensive and it is your Koryu school and your Koryu dojo and all that stuff. Um, and the encampment as well, which is something we definitely want to get as soon as possible. Um, blacksmith is still a thing in this game. It, it works a little bit differently though. It gives you armor and melee and you can decide uh, if you rank it up to the fullest, you can either get one armor and five melee or three and three. So three armor and three melee attack, which I think is a lot better because you basically trade off one armor for each uh, melee attack and I think that's a lot better. However, you also have the encampment upgrade. There's only three of them. One of them is six accuracy, the other one's one armor, and the last one is three melee attack. So in that case, it's only one armor for three melee attack. And I think in that case, it's better to get the three melee attack. But we'll get into that later when we actually get the chance to make those kind of buildings. What would your chance be on this building, by the way? 31%. Yeah, I don't know why our percentages are so small right now. Because, I don't know. Maybe it just has to take a turn or something. Or maybe it's because it's only 80%. But you should be getting it up pretty quickly. It does, um, the influence does go up uh, very quickly if you do put a Junsu Sushi in that town. But anyway, um, so we could upgrade this right away, which will allow us to make the uh, Foot Samurai right away. So we can make them very early on. But they're also, of course, pretty expensive. Um, I think for now... What we'll do, we need to we need to set a target. So our ally is right down here. So it, it is a nice idea to take Kai. We get a little triangle as well. Um, but we probably need to find ourselves like a foothold. We need to have places that we can um, defend from. This that like uh, North of South Shinano is a nice choke uh, point, um, but North Shinano obviously can get attacked from so many sides. It's not a very good point to defend from. So we want to probably start taking all these provinces over here so we have a cheese and a choke point plus it gives us the craftsworks and the armor as well so we can make good units there um, and besides that we probably want to take Kai maybe Saruga so Saruga is a choke point as well because we have our ally to the east and then we have uh, Saruga and just we have nothing else to the west besides Totomi so it's not too many places we can get attacked from um, so I think Kai is a good target, however I think I'm going to take it with this guy if I can. So I'm probably just going to move my uh, army together and I'm going to start moving them this way. I don't think I want to take Mino just yet. Uh, these people are also Minamoto, so they're not as likely to, or to attack me. They also have a Silk Workshop, which is a new thing by the way. Uh, schools are different. Um, you can see here the Silk thing as well. So you, you don't have any school. Well, you do have still have schools in this game, but they work in a different manner. Uh, also, what's our capital? Okay, so our capital is South Shinano. It's good to know for early recruitment. Um, so there are still schools uh, right there. But in this uh, game, the school just improves your rate of art. Just on the top one, it gives you an extra 20%. So I don't think it's a very good building. I mean, it's all right, but... Um, right, so we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do. Okay, so there's a few more things to go over, I guess. So first of all, agent action. So I kind of went over what the Jun Tsushi does. Uh, he can bribe, he can, uh, he, he does the same uh, as a Metsuke when sitting in towns. He still makes uh, money in towns as well, he increases the tax rate, which is very good. Then you've got um, a Shirop Yoshi, uh, which is a, a lady who can do the same as a Geisha when sitting in town. She improves like the growth of the town uh, and she can um, bribe over or seduce enemy generals to join you, basically. Um, and she can also sabotage armies, which only reduces half their movement, though, and not the entire movement. Then you've got a uh, Monomi, which is like a, um, a ninja, and it does the same things, uh, I think. Uh, you can't actually recruit them, except if you've got one of these buildings. So you have to. You can only recruit them in Omi, Iga, and Ki, which is uh, interesting. You can't recruit them anywhere else, because you can't make those ninja buildings. Um, and then you've got the Su, which is like the monk, and does similar things to the monk. Right. Okay. Enough of that. So currently in our army we've got one sword attendant, two Naganata levy, one bow levy, and one bow attendant. I probably want to get a bunch of units as fast as possible. So let's see. I think I'll queue up one bow attendant here, or bow levy here. So we got two bow levy, and then I'll queue up um, one of each from them here. Just so then we've got like equal numbers. So we got two sword attendants, two Naganata levy, two bow attendants, and two bow levy, which sounds pretty good. Uh, that does take up most of our money, but right. So there's one more thing. 
God, there's a lot of, ex a lot of shit to explain. And we'll, I'll be explaining more stuff as we go as well. I'm probably not going to make this into a, a, a recruitment facility, by the way. That'll uh, happen somewhere else. I can't do it in Sugami because uh, Sugami is owned by our ally. So we can't really use that. But I think that's why we probably want to go to these provinces as soon as possible. And we actually can get there fairly quickly. Um, anyway, so yeah, the fields. So you can upgrade them into two different things. You can upgrade them into pastures and dry field agriculture. Dry field agriculture gives you uh, more wealth and more food, but the pastures allow you to make cavalry in the province where the pastures are present. Um, as long as you, of course, have a cavalry producing dojo. So for now, we don't really need that in any of these provinces because we're not going to make any cav around here. Um, I don't think, by the way, this has like a... No, there's no charge thing either. Uh, so, yeah, we don't have to worry about that either, so let's make them with melee attack or whatever. Um, so anyway, we could upgrade uh, one of our f pastures or fields. Uh, this is already a pasture, actually, but we're, yeah, like I said, we're not going to make our units here, so I might just get rid of this at some point. Although it is meager soil, so it doesn't really matter regardless, but it would give us an extra food to go for the other, other one. Um, so then we have, yeah, you have your buildings, I guess, so we'll quickly go over down the encampment. Same thing as the other thing, like I already explained. Barter exchange uh, is like a market. However, you can upgrade it into different things. One of them actually gives food. The other one doesn't take food, but it increases your wealth by a lot more. And the quarter you training grounds uh, is what I, yeah, the Nayanata tenants, bow warrior monks, bow, uh, or uh, Nayanata warrior monks, etc. Clan estate gives you the Shirob Yoshi and increases the bonus to tax rate in this province. It also increases the spread. And like I said, if you have upgraded to the max, it'll increase spread to other provinces around you as well. The school, I already explained that. Bushi training grounds, we already explained that. And the Buddhist sanctuary uh, gives you the monk. And uh, you also need this to make the warrior monk units as well. Right, anyway, so North Shinano, it's got average soil, so it'd probably be alright to make a barter exchange here. And then we can start making some more Jinsetsushis soon as well. So I think I'll probably go for that. Or I might just go for the uh, dry field agriculture first, which I think is an even better idea. Um, yeah, okay, so I think our first turn is finally done. God, that took about half an hour. Well, actually, not, not that long, but nearly. Um, I'm also wond wondering, maybe I should go for this soon. I mean, I do like money, of course, and especially more trade, because we're we're trading a lot. So I think, actually, this would be pretty good, but the, the extra two turns is kind of a bummer. This can take seven turns to do. do want to get this as soon as possible, because if we do get here quickly, then we want to be able to make the best units right away, and then we'll never have to worry about making anything else. Okay, so I'm going to move him slightly further. Might as well use that movement a little bit. Um, I'll attempt this one more time since we went to trade with some other people. Maybe they then decide they do want to get trade, but it doesn't look like it. How much money are we making off trade anyway? Oh, it's all very poor trades, but still. Um, okay, I think that's, uh, that's about all we can do. Yep, let's end the turn. So yeah, I think I explained uh, most of stuff right now. Okay, I'll obtain the allegiance of any province, so we get plus 10% of the success chance of doing sushi actions. Okay, so let's see what his chance to do this now. 62%. Uh, the army is standing outside, but it's only three units, so I think I probably will try to do this. I'll actually, let's try it right away. There you go. So now we own this town. Um, which is good. We are now bordering our ally, which means we should be able to... Tr I think we're... Yeah, we are bordering my ally. Uh, yeah, right, so I got, let's get Trey going with him as well. Our friend is See if he's willing to pay me something for it. Especially in these times of trouble. And we're also bordering them even more now, and they actually do I want to get Trey going to now. Listen. When you have spoken and spoken in honesty... I will so actually, I would be a little bit worried about them, the... Kajiwara, they like the Tyra, and oh wow, well, we're trading with every single clan that we can trade with. Um, they like the Kaira, uh, sorry, the Tyra, so they might just come and attack me at some point. So I probably do want to make some units here at some point, just to have a little bit of a defense. So we have enough money left to do something. Uh, could queue up a few more units here, I suppose. Um, I guess I'll queue up another Ranganata Levy or two. Actually, if I could queue up only... Oh, nope, not that one. If I queue up only one, can I afford to do something else? Yes. Oh, right. Before we do anything... Commissioner for Development, please. That'll save me a little bit of money, too. So I think right here, like I said, I wanted to have the barter exchange. We'll make this into a, a little bit of a money-making province. Not really. It's not going to be 
that big on the money, but it's all right. Okay, so in Kai, uh, okay, this is actually going up. So it is going to be unhappy a little bit. We'll shove him into the town. That should be fine. I don't know if any, if anything, we can always exempt it from taxes for a turn. Um, but yeah, we'll make two of those units there, and then we'll send these guys over uh, next turn as well. And then they'll get there in two or three turns, and then we'll, we'll start going that way, I think. Um, I might also shove this guy, or send this guy over here once this ha town is happy, and then I can see if I can maybe just take this town from them. But these guys are going to be like 80% or more than that um, towards the uh, the Tyra faction, so they're not going to be very supportive of the Minamoto for the moment. Um, so yeah, we're training with everyone. Let's uh, keep going, I guess. It would be good if our ally actually took that, because then we wouldn't have to worry about that at all anymore, and then we'd be completely safe in Kai. But I really doubt my ally is going to go for that. Okay, so the Jun Sushi leveled up. I've, that's something I've noticed so far, is that agents actually still get experience even when not when they're not in the town, which is interesting, because he's only done like he he needs 20 experience to level up the first level. He um, gained 15 from the successful thing, and he gained six because he's got one from just standing around, so I guess maybe when it's only when he's sitting in an, in an enemy, or when he's actually doing something, because he of course is, like, um, doing this in the meantime as well. Okay, so this minus one, we'll just shove him into town, but first we'll do his level up. Uh, so we'll give him, oh god, that's all pretty terrible, I guess we'll give him unmannered samurai. And then we're gonna go for this, this spreads influence and requests allegiance, this is good. Uh, this entire tree is based around that, the bribing and uh, overseeing towns and uh, requesting allegiance and all that. This side is more, um, but this is bribing and paying off as well, but then you've got counter spying and overseeing armies and shit that we don't really care about. So we'll shove him in the time for now, because that's going to keep him happy. Um, yeah, they shouldn't go unhappy next turn. Oh god, the wealth in this province is horrible. Discontent, yeah. Um, Right, so we have a bit of, a bit of money. I guess we'll start sending these units over there as well. So we're making, or I want to make one more unit there, and I guess we can spend that last bit of money to upgrade the farm here, um, or another building. If we make another barter exchange, it means we can get another um, another Junsa Sushi as well. But I think I'll go for the farm first. Okay, and yeah, we made those units. So these guys are going to get there next turn. Cool. So I think the turn after next, we're going to go on the offensive. Okay, roads, by the way. One thing I have come forgot to mention. Roads are super expensive in this game. Um, and they do give movement speed and all that. They give good uh, per turn to town growth as well. But they don't seem as important to level up as in the regular game. Because they're so damn expensive that you don't really bother with it. Anyway, um... I don't think anything else changed on the diplomacy side of things, so let's keep going. We're also going to get Chinese learning next turn, which will increase our income a little bit. But yeah, I really like the uh, requesting allegiance thing, because even on Legendary, actually, that's a really good way of getting provinces. Okay, so we've got Chinese learning working on rice loans now. Our income went up, regardless of us making... Uh, some units. Okay, so now we've got our army ready. We've got two sword attendants, four Nagadatha Levy, two bow attendants, and two bow levy. Seems pretty good to me. So we're gonna go on the offensive next turn. We should be able to reach that in one turn, actually, I hope. Uh, can't quite tell. Text is a little bit in the way. I think we're just, just gonna about, uh, or just about gonna reach it. Okay, so this should be happy again next turn. Yeah, it will be. So I guess I'll make a barter exchange here, too. Um... This one over here is going to be done next turn, and we'll send this guy out. Yeah, we don't have to leave him there anymore, so we'll see. I don't know, I, I don't think I really want to try and convert these guys. I'm, I'm probably better off just taking this town, for example. You can see 82%. There's an army in there, which is why it's a little bit more expensive. We can get there next turn. Um, and, like, this one is going to be very difficult to take, because the converting is going to take a fair amount of time, whereas this one we can just take outright. But then again, I also don't want to spread too thin, either. Who are these, please? The Tatomi. The, uh, the Lee. The Lee, okay, the Lee are also Tyra. So the thing is, like, we can take this one, but they will still be bordering another province that doesn't like us either, so... I'd rather just not border any of these, to be honest, but I mean, we are bordering them, so there's not much we can do about that. I guess we can go have a look 
but it also means we're further away from taking this province. Um, it's also pretty expensive to take that province. Now let's 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 uh, go for this province. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what they've got. Get some information on them. So you can see we can't actually do it right now because the influence is less than 50%. But it should be going pretty up, uh, pretty uh, up pretty quickly now. Yeah, you can see it's going up a basic or well, nearly 10% a turn. Um, just because of the guy that's sitting there. So it's still going to be possible fairly soon. So we'll leave him there for now. Kai is minus one, but they'll be happy next turn. And besides that, I think we're going to save our money. I mean, I could make another unit, but then we're just going to have like the one unit. And I hate having one spare unit of something. I'm not OCD or anything, but... Um, however, I'll, I'll still make some units because we, we can always use them later. If anything, they'll just keep the town happy, I guess. Okay, so they're besieging that town, it looks like. In winter. A fine choice, sir. Oh, and they got... Oh, man, they got defeated. So my ally is nearly dead. Instantly. It's a good job. Okay. Got a son. So we can't actually make a Jun Satsushi yet, because, we, of course, we already had one, so we, so we started with one. Um, right, so let's see what the... What's well, going to be next time? 33.4, yeah, so it's still going up by 8.4%. I think it does, like, become less and less every turn, but in, like, three or four turns, we'll be able to take that turn if we want to. And I'm making a school and upgrading that as well. I mean, the more we're upgrading it, great, like, I'll take it. It's going to be pretty expensive to take that town, though, because by that time, they'll also have more units in there. Speaking of how many units they've got, if this is any indication of how many units these guys are going to have, we should be able to take this fairly, fairly easily. I don't know how who were uh, these people are at war with, or who they're allied with, the Daisuke. They're allied to the Kiyohara, which are these people up there. Okay, so we're gonna lose trade with them too if we're already trading with them, which we are. It's not an easy time to take though. And it's one that we want to take regardless, so let's move to the border. I don't want to move, like, waste any movement. Because we can just about reach their town. Okay, I'm not gonna call my ally in because I, I want to keep my ally. I don't want to risk losing them. Okay, so I think I'll siege them out because we don't we don't we have no uh, or we don't have to hurry them. Oh crap! Actually, I might want to wait one turn for the dry field agriculture. Um, it means they can make more units though. Eh, it's kind of a bummer, because then I kind of want to wait for the barter exchange too, because that's probably what I would make otherwise anyway, because they've got a lumber camp too. Um, nah, screw their barter exchange. I'll make it myself. And I'll, uh, the other thing as well, the dry field agriculture. It's kind of a waste of money, but waiting is also a waste of money, so. Um... I think I want to make two more bow attendants, because they're units I'll be using for quite a while. So, I think I'll, uh, I'll have some more of them. And besides that, we, once again, don't have a whole lot to do, so... End the turn, see if they attack me. I really doubt it. They'll probably wait as long as they can before they will go and attack me. I hope my ally survives a little bit longer. It's one of the major factions. They want a peace treaty. I'm Sorry, mate. I need your province. It's nothing personal, you're just in my way. My ally could have been there and I still would have taken it. Mm. Later, maybe. Okay, so we finished our dry field agriculture. Oh! Oh, right, of course. I don't know why I hadn't considered that. So the dry field agriculture is actually finished because it's not in the, it's not in their town, so they continue work on it. Um, but the barter exchange is, is still being cancelled by me. Right, well, I don't know why I hadn't realized that, but now I have. Okay, you might be able to reach that. Okay, that's fine. It's reinforcement range. I probably could auto resolve this, but I don't really want to. Um, okay, so we actually have enough for roads somewhere if we wanted to make them. Probably North Shonana would be an alright province to make roads. So here's the uh, the two options between um, or for the, uh, the develop for the barter exchange. You can make food stores in the market. So the food stores gives less wealth uh, to begin with, but it gives more per turn to town growth. And it gives an extra food as well. And of course, the per turn to town growth is going to become more and more every time you level up. So, like the last one is going to be 30, but you need Way of Chi, which is like the last level up here. Uh, here. Which is probably something we're never going to get. But that's still something to consider. The per turn to town growth is pretty good. The market just gives a whole lot of uh, wealth, though. So for instant money, well, the market's a lot better. Plus, it costs cheaper, which is something you have to take into consideration, too. 
But anyway, since these provinces are pretty big, especially North Shinar, I think I'm just going to make roads here. I think that's not a bad place to have roads. Eh, and it's pretty expensive, though. I don't know. So I, I don't know with the market. I, I kind of like the food. Having extra food is always good. It's a good. An extra food always gives more wealth as well. Um, I don't know. Let's just yeah. Let's just upgrade the roads. I think the roads are yeah. It's a fine upgrade. Okay. Cool. I think they're probably gonna attack me this turn as well. And otherwise they'll do it next turn. Otherwise I have to just surrender, which I don't think they want to do. I might even auto resolve it when they do attack, but probably not because it's a first fight. We have to we have to fight the first fight, of course. But if they were to auto resolve, uh, or sorry, if they were to attack, then the auto resolve would be easier, of course, since they're on the attack. But I'll um, I'll fight this one. Throwing on a quick save, yeah, because we can. So they've got four Nanganata levy. We have six. Um, they've got two bow levy, which we have two and two bow attendants. And we have the two sword attendants and the two generals against this one, so yeah. It's gonna be easy. So one f uh, thing about this game as well is the garrison units are a lot bigger. Uh, some, one thing I haven't gone over yet as well. Um, so you can see you've got the two upgrade thingies for the town. You've got the town and then you've got like the town watch or whatever. The town, if you upgrade it, uh, it takes to food like normal in regular Shogun 2. It's it's pretty similar to Fall of the Samurai, by the way. So the town, you, it gives you an extra uh, or an additional uh, slot, but the town watch or whatever it's called, if you upgrade that, you get more uh, repression and you get more people that would defend and you, uh, you get more replenishment rate and you give an extra get an extra um, recruitment slot as well. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, so yeah, I have to sort of upgrade both. Alright, screw the speeches, we don't give a shit about that. Okay, I think this over here looks like a pretty good spot to sit in. So I think I'm just gonna set up like right here. Uh, set them up on the sides. This seems to work really well on this game, by the way. If I wanna have them on the sides, I do it like this and then this works. And regular Shogun 2 sometimes it doesn't wanna work. And actually, probably wanna have them on the flanks. It's kind of annoying. Like the sword attendants, they're a flanking unit. Well, they're, yeah, because they're, they're like you don't want to have them on the front line, so you want to flank around with them. But um, you also don't want them to run into cav on their own. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong unit. But yeah, you also don't want them to run in, uh, into cav, so you don't want to have them on the flanks either, really, because then they're more susceptible to cav. Whereas every single other melee unit you've got is anti cav, so it's kind of annoying. So uh, it's better to just like set them up behind and then just run them around when you when you feel it's it's like possible to do so. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I probably won't be using all those units, but... Let's see. Set you guys up right... Yeah, actually, I should at least run you up here for starters, so we get up there in time. Um, okay, so yeah, let's... Uh oh yeah, now we got this fella. Forgot about him. Yeah, you can uh, you can stay right here. I don't want I want to use him. I mean, it's not like I don't really want to use him. It's just that he's going to be annoying right there. Uh, okay, that's actually not like a hilled place there, or like not a um, not like a canyon where we can set up our men. Okay, uh, so we'll have just like three units cover the front, I think. These two sitting behind, and I'll have my sword attendants over here. Uh, actually, I'll keep this one over on this side, and he can flank around because it looks like some of the units might be coming around anyway. And then we've got our generals back here. So yeah, generals do have bows, like I said. So I'm actually going to put them like right here. But of course, they can get wrecked by bows too. Generals do like look like they get killed pretty damn quickly in this game. Well, maybe not the actual general himself, but the general unit for sure. Okay, this guy... I'm sorry, what? How did I accidentally move him that way? Actually, I guess I can use him to flank. But the thing is, he's gonna run away so quickly if these guys just start shooting him. So, no, let's run him. Let's walk him back. If they wanna follow up with one unit, then that's fine. Okay. 
So our archers are firing. I'm gonna have my archers focus on theirs. And you can see our generals are firing as well. Oh, crap. I forgot to set up my bow units, didn't I? Where is this one? Oh, no, I just set up that one. I thought I set this one and one up over here, but I guess I did not. You guys are still getting in position. Get in there quickly. And I guess I'll start sending these guys around. Our general is in there. grave danger, my lord! Okay, since we do have uh, ill advantage, I guess we'll just charge in there. Get these guys around as well. And the same with these fellas. Of course, we have to be careful with his general, because he'll wreck me. Okay. So, yeah, we're losing a few men in the general already. Inspire our men, because, yeah, I mean, it's not legendary, but even so, your men rise so extremely quickly. One thing I also forgot to mention is that um, there's only loose formation in this game, which is interesting. Uh, there's no regular formation, there's only loose formation. Which is, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Well, it's not funny, actually, it's very annoying. Okay, this unit's getting wrecked. And that's one of my better bow units. I don't want him to get wrecked. But we're about to charge into their bow levies with our sword attendants. So we should be doing pretty good damage here. Even though we're charging from a bit of a weird angle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, we're already shattering some of the units in the middle as well. Get my general's a little bit closer. Okay, so we broke them. Let's get into the general unit. And it'll charge on the, off on them as well. This is a sword attendant unit, of course, we don't really want to have him against a, a general, but everyone's breaking through in the middle anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, this unit got wrecked. I've really that noticed. Even though they're ascending in the forest, they still just My get Lord, completely destroyed. Okay. Nice thing about the generals, you, you put them in the melee to charge something, they still shoot them as they're going there as well. Uh, one thing about the generals, though, is it's hard to spot who the general is because they don't have the balloons like in regular Shivan 2. And I don't actually think there's any distinction between the general's men and the general himself. I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember. But anyway, that was a decent victory. I mean, it, it's, we were never going to lose that, we had a massive advantage. But yeah, we lost a bit on this unit, some of the melee troops. The annoying thing is as well, like, we didn't get any experience yet. You really need to get experience on the Langanata Levy. Again, it's hard, so it's not as big a deal as it is on Legendary, but still. On uh, on Legendary, your men just, they route so, it's so quickly. It's just, it's really not funny. Like, I can, I'm going to keep saying it. You, you'll see it once I actually play Legendary. I should have these guys go to these guys, actually. Um, but yeah, you'll see it once we actually play Legendary. It's, it's not, it's, it's, just, it's. Unbelievable how quickly they're out. They can literally lose like 40 of their men or so and they're just gone. And, and not even that. I had like a siege defense. Another thing that I forgot to mention, siege defenses. Um, in this game, the lowest level town, like the fort basically, it doesn't actually have walls. It's just like like fences really, like a few fences. and Like not even like many fences. It's just literally like a, a fence you put around a farm. That sort of thing. They can just walk through it. It's nothing basically. It, it does give you a little bit of cover for, um, for like, if you if you put your arches on it, but it, it's really annoying because you can't like spread your arches out at all. It's it's really weird, but you'll see. But anyway, um, oh, you guys can stop running. Anyway, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, now I've forgotten. All oh, right, yeah, I was doing a siege defense, and I literally lost. Uh, I had a similar army, maybe even a little bit better than the enemy, and. My men got shot a little bit before the in the initial uh, fight. Then the enemy charged me. I, I, well, the enemy came up. I charged them uh, in return. I had a few units that were better than theirs, and it, it, my men just routed. And my generals was in, were in range as well. It was unbelievable. Anyway, that unit's like I want to kill that one a little bit more. I probably should have just freaking auto or um uh, triple speeded the entire thing, but I I was just talking too much and I kind of forgot. So when I hurt that unit, you know, yeah, that's fine. It'll be dead. Okay. Pretty sure that general is still alive though, so I don't think we actually get the town, but either way it's fine, we'll just all of us all the next turn. But um yeah, this game is definitely it's a little bit different than Shogun 2, but it's closer to regular Shogun 2 than Fall of the Sunrise, I think. Um in certain things, not in all. 
because of, I mean, just the, mostly combat because Father's Armor is just completely different in combat, just because the units are completely different. It's it's a lot more gun, whereas this game it's still just uh, like bow and arrow and and uh, regular weapons, langanatas and all that. Anyway, um, we lost 196, 196 men. Sadly, most of it on that unit. Got no experience except for the general. No one got any particularly amazing amount of kills. And yeah, the general survived, which I guess is actually a good thing because it means we get to fight again, which means we get uh, the level up on our general. Oh, yeah, nice. Cool. All right, so we we'll should occupy that. General level up. Okay, so general levels. Uh, let's have a look at that. So let's do our retainer first. That's meh. That's pretty good. I'll take that. I mean, uh, the plus one, plus one is probably better, but honor, having good honor right away is always good for happiness. Um, but anyway, so the level up thing. The best tree that I found is like right in the middle here. These four, basically. Um, gives campaign wound range for the first one and campaign out of sight. Nobody really cares. This is actually not even that good. This is only 12%, whereas like in the regular game, it's a lot more. But this right here, um, plus one melee defense for all units. Stand and fight, most important. Um, charge bonus for all units, uh, command when attacking, uh, all situations, or sorry, command, yeah, command when attacking, all situations, and this one is command when defending, I don't really care about that, but then down here, uh, another command and 15% uh, to the upkeep cost reduction and uh, campaign movement range for all units, so this is a pretty good tree, this one is pretty good as well, here you get charge for, uh, for all units uh, and morale for the general, you get melee attack for all units and melee attack for the general, uh, accuracy for all units and accuracy for the general um, and all that sort of stuff but the thing is with this tree I like it but I, I like this one more and then um, I might miss out on the extra accuracy and stuff but if I have stand and fight it basically makes up for it anyway so because stand and fight gives like reload speed and it gives just overall good stats for every unit so I might miss out on like the individual stats here but I get them back with just stand and fight um, this is pretty good as well, by the way, the five, plus 4 charge bonus was only for cavalry, and plus 12 for the general as bodyguard. You can really make the general quite a beast. Um, and this is pretty good as well, by the way, but it means we have to get this, which I don't really care about, so I'm not going to go for that. Plus, I don't, we have to get this, which I don't care about either. And this tree, I think, was just pretty bad. Like, spreading happiness, meh. Loyalty is alright, but meh. Looting is terrible. Morale for all, all units, that's alright, but you have to go through this, so meh. And uh, this is, yeah, effectiveness of rally, meh. So anyway, um, this gives us uh, increase to the general's influence radius, and this gives us melee defense. Sadly, we're going to miss out on, this is only for the general, though, so we don't really care about it, the extra two. Um, and this gives an extra 10%, which is all right, but we're just going to not, like, have two of each because we want to go for our, this entire tree first uh, and foremost. So, yeah. That's that. Made some more units, paid a barter exchange, encountered some more clans, we destroyed the Daisuke, and extra stuff happened, yada yada, no one really cares. Okay, so one thing I've noticed as well is replenishment rate is absolutely horrendous, even for the beginning units. Um, men replenishing a turn, actually it's better, it's 13. It's just free here because this unit's full after three men. But yeah, it's absolutely horrendous. General's one man, which is pretty similar to the main game. But like these units, it's going to take so long for them to replenish. Unless I move them back here. Which I really don't want to do. Um, there are ways to improve it. Uh, like upgrading this to a master field increases replenishment. And you got the general stuff that increases replenishment. But yeah, overall, it's, just, it's pretty terrible. Um... Anyway, we're probably going to take this armor fur army further on. I'll probably leave it here for now, though. The town is a little bit unhappy. There's no uh, castle damage because the castle damage comes from this, and auto resolving the, uh, the fight doesn't actually damage this place at all. Or the repression comes to that anyway. So basically, yeah, it's just uh, eight happiness next turn. Um, so I guess I'll make another barter exchange here, too. Also, we can upgrade this, which gives us. Uh, recruiting ships is cheaper, gives extra wealth and uh, high quality timber. Barren soil, by the way, so we're probably not going to make this into a money making province. Where's our. Uh, oh, yeah, our guy's still standing there. This place, in this, at this point, is 40%. Extra, only 5% more per turn this time, but it's uh, still going up and up. So, in a few turns, we'll actually be able to try it at least. Um, right. 
so I think it might be time to send part of an army down this way, just uh, at least so we have something to defend back there. So that would be my second general, obviously. And I guess I'll just take part of this, the weak army. And then, yeah, because we can get the bow attendants in there as well. We do, we are still at war with these people, of course, so I do need to be careful, but I don't think there's any way they can have enough um, to attack me with. Moon would be better with him, but uh, I'll take the second guy. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll move him for the time. So I think I might make a few more units next turn as well. Uh, I mean, I could make them anywhere. Oh, and I can make my, my other Jinsatsushi, so I probably will do that as well. Um, so there's no way or no problems where we can build a better one than anywhere else. So we'll just make him. I guess I'll make him in North Shinano. Probably send him upwards towards these provinces or maybe to the east. We know these guys are um, Fujiwara, but we know these guys are our alliance. So our chance over here, by the way, 81% right now. So yeah, that's pretty good. And even with this guy, even though he's a low level, he probably has a, has a pretty decent chance as well. Okay, so yeah, we'll probably make a few units down here uh, to support this army. Just have it be a weaker army, but still, so at least I have an army. Um, okay, so rice loans next turn will be done, which will increase my income by a little bit. And then we're going to go for the tree down here, I think. Or up there. Um, okay, I guess we'll end another turn, and I'll probably end the episode then. Actually, it might do one more turn, otherwise it would be a pretty short episode. I'm, I'm thinking those guys might declare war on me at some point. Okay, they moved out of their town, which makes the chance of it doing that actually a little bit cheaper, which is pretty good. Alright, so we're not going to go for that. We're going to go down to Forms of the Earth. Alright, made our roads in North Shinano, which will help us out a little bit. Okay, so what is your percentage chance here? 74. Alright, that's a pretty good chance. The thing is, we do take this province, then we'll probably be bordering a bunch more provinces that don't like us necessarily. So I think maybe instead of doing that, we might want to not expand too quickly. Okay, so he, he's got like one more turn and then he should be able to do something here. Or at least attempt to do it. It'll probably be a expensive and not high chances of success, but it's alright. Um, okay, so this guy will level up regardless of what he does. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll send him over here and he can start exploring around these provinces to see what, what they're all up to. Our ally is still sitting in these two provinces here and I this point I really doubt he's gonna be able to take this so uh, this is Edo I want to know Edo who are you you are Tyra okay I oh, can get straight going with the Adachi please speak honestly and I will give you good attention see what he's willing to pay not a hundred uh, not 200 sadly 150 no 100 then all right 50 it is Okay, and the Sugawara, they're another I province that will be taken soon, I'm sure. And then give you a fair response. Now speak your part. I will speak my part. I will ask you for money for my very valuable trade. I actually don't think it's very... Oh, we did just acquire a wood, so I guess that's something. Alright. Sounds good. And that's it. Making 2k a turn now. Awesome. Uh, okay, yeah, you guys are, st are still gonna go down here. That plan hasn't changed. You guys are gonna go to Hida. Oh, look at that. He's on his way. Okay, so he does have 5, 10, 11 units. Against our 4, 8, 9, uh, 12. So, yeah, we should be alright. Although our units are a little bit depleted, but I think we'll be all right. And he, if he doesn't reach, it means we can get these two units in there as well. They should be able to definitely reach the town, which would be pretty strong. Although I'm pretty sure he can reach me as well. Um. Anyway, I, I actually could have moved these guys back, but honestly, for one, I hadn't seen it, and two, I probably wouldn't have done it anyway, because we should be all right. Okay, anyway, I'm going to end it, uh, the episode there, I think. Um, so... Yeah, next time we probably, or we might take Saruga, uh, if we can make this into Minamoto, we have a high enough chance for not too much money. Um, I might take this next turn as well, especially if he stays outside, it'll be an easy problem to take. And besides that, I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.